Hi, this is Dave, WO2X. This video is a quick start tutorial on setting up the Tuner Genius XL with a Flex 6600M, Power Genius XL, and the 403A 2x8 antenna switch. Here's an interconnect diagram showing a Flex 6600M, Power Genius XL amplifier, the Tuner Genius XL, and the 403A 2x8 antenna switch, which will support up to eight antennas along with the Ethernet network switch. This is the standard SO2R configuration. The RF cables are connected from the radio antenna port 1 to the amplifier input A and radio antenna port 2 to amplifier input B. Amplifier output A is connected to the Tuner Genius TXA and the amplifier output B is connected to the Tuner Genius TXB port. Then from the Tuner Genius antenna A, it goes to out A on the 2x8 switch, and the Tuner Genius antenna B is connected to out B on the 2x8 switch. All four pieces of equipment are connected to the Ethernet switch with network cables so that they can communicate with each other. Here's a diagram showing the back of the connections on the Tuner Genius. This is the SO2R model. Uh, the Tuner Genius uh, in the SO2R configuration supports two different RF paths. You have an A path and a B path. So the input is the TXA and the output is antenna A for the A path. And then the B path is TXB and antenna B is the output. Uh, you have a LAN connection that plugs into your network switch uh, if you're using a flex radio, uh, this is what you would use to communicate to the radio and also to the uh, 2x8 antenna switch. You have your DC input, uh, 15 volts DC maximum, 13.8 nominal with an on-off switch, a, or a ground connection. And then you have legacy connections uh, for legacy radios. Uh, the CAT inputs, you have an A side uh, for the A RF path and a B side for the B RF path. Uh, the CAT connection can support uh, Kenwood or Yesu protocol. There's CIV for ICOM, and there's pin-to-band data input also. Uh, you have a PTT in and a PTT out, and again, uh, you have it for the A side and also for the B side. The tuner can be configured to use a flex radio on one side, uh, on A side or B side, and use a legacy radio on the other side. We're now ready to start the configuration of the tuner genius. One thing to note is if you're using the antenna genius switch, uh, the antenna genius needs to be configured before you configure the tuner genius. So when we turn on the tuner genius, it will power up and the tuner comes up and right now it's not configured. I've downloaded the Tuner Genius application to the desktop and installed it. Now I'm ready to run it by just double clicking it. And if you've never connected to the Tuner Genius before, this is the screen that will come up and will show your Tuner Genius on the network and you click connect and it will connect to the tuner. Now we still have to configure the tuner for the radio and for the antenna switch. So to do that, the gear icon on top, Options, we click on that and click on Device Settings. And I'll bring this up to full screen here. So on this screen we have the Network tab. It shows you the default uh, name of the Tuner Genius. Uh, you can rename this if you have more than one Tuner Genius on your network. Uh, we also have DHCP enabled, which means it gets its IP address from my router. It shows you the IP address, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. If you need to set a static IP, you can uncheck this box and then enter the information. The remote access code is for future use for remote operation. Next, we have the CAT and CIV tab. If you're using uh, traditional radios, if you were to enable this, you could choose between Kenwood, ICOM, Yesu uh, FT1000 protocol or Yesu FTDX protocol. And you would set your baud rate, your parity, 
and if it's ICOM, the CIV address. And you can do this for port A or port B, and you can actually have a mix between conventional and traditional radios using CAT or CIV and flex radio, which uses the API uh, TCP IP protocol. So for this example, we're going to be using the flex radio. So we go to the flex radio tab, and in order to enable this, we click on enable on the first port A. For the serial number, we click on the down arrow, choose my radio. TX antenna is antenna 1, and this LAN is the PTT source. Do the same thing for port B. Click the down arrow, select the radio, and this is using antenna 2 and LAN for PTT. We can hit save. Go back in again. And what we're going to do now is go into the antenna genius, and we need to know the IP address of our antenna genius. Uh, mine, if, if you go into the Antenna Genius application and click on Device Information, you go to Settings and then Device Information, it'll show you the IP address of your Antenna Genius. Mine is 10.0.0.248. So I'm going to click, click that, click Enable, and you must click Save at this point. Now if you go back into the Settings again, uh, and you go to the other tab, uh, you'll see here you have display backlight intensity for the tuner. As for the front display of the tuner, you can reduce the intensity of the display. Uh, port A and Port B receive bypass. If you want the tuner to bypass on receive, you would click the appropriate box. Otherwise, you would have that unchecked and the tuner would be in circuit on receive and transmit. The band configurator is where we're going to actually go in and look at the different antennas that we have. The band configurator window gets its information from the 2x8 antenna switch. In my case, I have a G5RV that has been defined for 80, 60, and 40 meters. I have a dipole on 30 meters. And then I have a 5-band Yagi and the G5RV set up for 20 meters and 17 meters. 5-band Yagi on 15, 12, and 10. And then the 5-band Yagi and G5RV for 6 meters. So for 20 meters, 17 meters, and 6 meters, I have two different antennas defined. I can have separate tuning solutions for each of those antennas on each of those bands. The minimum SWR is the value that the tuner uses in an auto-tune cycle to accomplish a good tune cycle. That can be adjusted up or down as needed. The enable bypass allows you to identify a portion of the band where your antenna is resonant and you want the tuner to be in bypass. For example, on 20 meters, if my antenna is resonant from 14100 to 14200, I can check the enable bypass and then I would click here for the bypass start and I would enter the frequency in kilohertz. So 14100 is 14100 and I would do the same thing for the end and put in 14200 and hit enter. Now if I hit save what would happen is when I'm below 14100 or above 14200 the tuner would be in circuit and when I'm between 14100 and 14200, the tuner would be bypassed. I'm not going to have it in circuit, so I mean bypass, so I'm going to clear it. And to do that, I just double click, enter zero, hit enter, double click, hit zero, enter, and I can uncheck the enable bypass. So we're completed with the setup of the tuner genius, so we can click save, and we'll click save again and that will get us out of the configuration. On the application on the computer, you'll see that you have the forward power SWR, you have the A side of the tuner, this is an SO2R model tuner. So the A side right now is set for 80 meters, it's talking to my radio, that's the name of my radio, and it's on 3563, and for the 2x8 antenna switch, it's using port number 4 
which is my G5 RV. I'm in operate right now, and port B right now is not connected. If I were to open up another tab here and change this to 20 meters, for example, and go ahead and set this over to antenna 2, you'll see then that port B of the Tuner Genius picks up and it's on antenna 1, which is my 5-band Yagi, and it's on 14.345. So this completes the application part of it. The last thing I want to cover is the front panel of the tuner itself. The button on the left, the bypass operate button, will put the tuner to bypass or if you click it again, it'll go back to operate and the tuner is in circuit on transmit and receive unless you have uh, in the configuration screen set it up to bypass receive for port A or port B. The button on the right is the tune button and that is the same as clicking the tune in your tuner genius application. It'll initiate a tune cycle and you see that it's tuned. Uh, the bottom three buttons, the th bottom three knobs are for manual tuning uh, when you turn them. So if you push the left knob in, when you're in manual tuning, you can now adjust your C, your L, and your C2. And you can manually set those. And when you're done, you can push it in again and it saves the tuning solution. So if you wanted to set up and manually tune it and tune it for the best SWR and then save it, you can do that. The middle button uh, sets your minimum SWR threshold for tuning. So you can adjust this up or down uh, to set the minimum SWR that it needs to achieve to find a proper tuning solution. The third knob, when you push it in, will go into the bypass where you can set your bypass uh, on the amplifier, yeah, on the tune. The third knob, when you push it in, um, the, the third knob, when you push it in, will go into setting up your bypass. If you have a resonant antenna and you have a portion of the band that you want to bypass the tuner, this is where you would set it up manually from the tuner. It's easier to set up in the application if you have access to the Windows application. More details on the manual uh, setting up of the bypass is covered in the Tuner Genius manual. And this completes the setup of the Tuner Genius XL and a demonstration on the operation and tuning of the tuner. Any questions, uh, you can check in with the Flex Community Forum. Uh, there's a Tuner Genius section on the Community Forum uh, where you can post questions uh, and people will be there to help. Also, on Flex Radio's website, you can download the user manual for the tuner. This is Dave, WO2X. Thanks for watching.